Today's video is all about measuring the value or inductance of, uh, of unknown coils and the uh, resonant frequency of unknown parallel tuned circuits like little IF transformers like this one here. Now the inspiration from this came from a discussion I was having with one of my viewers and they brought up this interesting article here by uh, Michael Covington, N4TMI. This was published in, uh, let's see, 73 magazine uh, back in September of uh, 1990. Now this can be found online, uh, all the 73 magazines are available as an archive online and I'll give you a link uh, to this article uh, in the notes down below. Well, in the article Michael describes his search for a test oscillator that would work with parallel tuned circuits and the reason for that is he wanted to be able to test both inductors as well as parallel tuned circuits like IF transformers and uh, that kind of knocks out the use of a uh, clap oscillator or the more traditional Hartley or Colpitts oscillators. So we came across this circuit. Uh, it was actually originally published as a uh, circuit with vacuum tubes and has been kind of adapted here to use JFETs. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the circuit description. That's in the article here that uh, you can go read yourself. But the idea is that you can essentially switch in a capacitor in parallel with your unknown inductor and then let this oscillator start singing and uh, measure its output, uh, measure its frequency, and then from that you can calculate the inductance. And then by switching the capacitor out of circuit, you can stick a parallel tuned circuit like an IF transformer uh, in here, and then measure uh, the IF transformer's resonant frequency the same way. Now the original circuit used a pair of uh, 2N5245s for the source coupled pair, and I didn't have any uh, of these devices, so I used a pair of J310s. And the only thing that I found is with the J310s, with the different in IDSS and the, the gate source threshold voltage, that a 470 ohm resistor here was putting, uh, you know, Q2 into kind of its resistive region, the linear region, as opposed to the saturation region. So it wasn't really working well as an oscillator. So I found that just by changing this 470 ohm resistor to a 1K ohm resistor in my implementation here, that uh, that allowed the uh, the drain voltage of Q2 to raise up a little bit, get Q2 into the saturation region for the JFET, and everything worked just fine. You know, I found that this circuit oscillates from about 9 volts uh, power supply voltage up to, you know, 18 volts or more. So you could use a 9-volt battery, your 12-volt power source that you'd use for your ham rig and that kind of thing, or even, um, you know, two 9-volt batteries in series. The larger the voltage, uh, the you know, more prone the circuit is to oscillate. So for low Q circuits, it uh, it might work better with uh, with a higher VCC. I put the circuit together on a uh, simple copper clad board with a cop couple of just uh, solder islands here, and it's just a you know a small number of components. Now in the original circuit, the 150 picofarad capacitor was switched in and out with a physical switch. I just uh, mounted mine in a pair of sockets. And this uh, now gives me the flexibility of swapping this out for other capacitor values if I wanted to resonate a coil with a different capacitor other than the 150 picofarads that was in the article. So I've also got a couple of test sockets here to connect up uh, with uh, inductors and coils and IF transformers that have different lead spacings. So all of this works uh, pretty well. Now normally you'd think of uh, taking the output of the oscillator from here, but in this case uh, Michael's chosen to take it from uh, the common source connection here. Now of course this, this isn't going to give you the purest output. The output signal is going to be full of harmonics, but all you want to do is measure frequency. So uh, by taking the output here, you're not going to load this with the capacitance of your probe or frequency counter or whatever you're using, and therefore you're going to get a more accurate uh, resonant frequency reading. Let's start off by uh, measuring the value of this inductor. And of course, the color code's on here, but sometimes deciphering them could be a little tricky, so let's just go measure it. We'll stick it into the, uh, the test socket here, and we can see the resulting output uh, on the scope. And using the frequency counter in the scope to measure about 7.3 megahertz is the resonant frequency. Now, of course, we could use the formula for a parallel tuned circuit, rearrange it to calculate inductance, but you know, punching this into a calculator is no fun. So, uh, one of the alternatives is a nifty little slide calculator like this. This is from the ARRL, and I'll give you a link to uh, where you can get one of these as well. And uh, this side of this slide calculator uh, allows you to compute um, parallel tuned circuits. 
The other side is to compute single layer uh, coil windings. But this side is for parallel tuned circuits. So we know we've got uh, 7.3 megahertz is our resonant frequency. So if we dial in the frequency here, let's see, that is 7 megahertz, there's 7.2. Let's pull this a little bit further here. There's a uh, 7.3 megahertz or so on the, uh, the frequency chart. And we go down here and look along, there's 150 picofarads. And this is showing me just a little bit less than, say, 3.2 microhenries of inductors. So let's go verify that on the uh, LC meter. All right, so let's uh, turn the, uh, the LC meter on, let it go and do its calibration. We'll grab the inductor here. And uh, we need to put it in the inductance mode. I'm currently shorting my terminals here. We'll zero out the uh, parasitic inductance of my fixture and pull the uh, jumper out and stick our inductor in here. And we can see about 3.1 microhenries on the LC meter. Now, of course, you know, I could have just done this to begin with, but what's the fun in that? We wanted to go build our circuit. Yeah, so now, of course, we can very easily go me uh, measure a number of other inductors here. If I grab uh, you know, this guy and stick it in my circuit, I can see that gives me a, about 5.1 uh, megahertz resonant frequency. If I grab this, uh, this toroid that I wound and stick that in here, let's get that in the socket here, that gives me about 11.9 megahertz resonant frequency. You know, if we grab this, uh, here's an old uh, coil that came out of a radio and it's got a, uh, a slug so we can actually tune its uh, inductance and I'm just going to be able to hold this and I have to hold this one in there. We can see that's a pretty, high, a pretty large inductance, probably about 100 microhenries or so. We can actually see the frequencies of only about 1.2 megahertz on that one. So uh, very easy to go you know, put some unknown inductors in here and, uh, and actually go make some measurements uh, of resonant frequency. And of course, once we have the resonant frequency, we can go through our little slide calculator here, where you can go through the calculations to measure what the inductance is. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, one of the beauties of this little circuit is that we can actually use it to measure the resonant frequency of a parallel tuned circuit, like an IF transformer here. This one I happen to know is a 455 megahertz, or excuse me, 455 kilohertz IF transformer. Uh, so if I pull my little 150 picofarad capacitor out of the circuit and uh, stick the IF transformer uh, into the sockets here. See so if I can do this on camera here. There we go. Actually, I'll slow this down so you can actually see the waveform here. So the lower frequency oscillations oscillate pretty strongly so the waveform looks a little different. So I can see 449 kilohertz. In fact, if I take my little diddle stick here and I adjust the slug you can actually see how I can actually change the frequency or the resonant frequency of this coil. And this is what you're doing when you're aligning a radio. You're adjusting the resonant frequency of these tuned transformers, these tuned IF stages. Now, of course, this uh, IF transformer I knew was a 455 kilohertz uh, IF transformer. But this one here, I, it's, there's no markings on it. The markings have kind of worn away, so I wasn't sure what it was. So uh, if we take this one and stick it in here, let's see if I can get that kind of stuck in the coil here. So that's running at about 7.3 megahertz. So this would be used usually in a, in a you know a higher IF stage. So 7.3 meg, and if we, we adjust the the tuning coil on this, we can see I can adjust that one here as well. So this would be useful, you know, maybe in another super het receiver design or transmitter design where you might want to have a 7 megahertz IF. They have to remember that you know a circuit built like this is going to have some parasitic capacitance associated with it. So, you know you can get uh, you'll get a you know probably within five or ten percent accuracy of your inductance measurements, and uh, and certainly the resonant frequency may change slightly uh, when you're in a circuit with these devices versus what you're doing here. So if you tune this thing to be exactly some particular value, you might have to tweak it and align it again when you put it in your circuit. But that's just you know because the impedance that this test circuit pre presents to the device under test will be different than the impedance that's presented to it by the circuit that you might be using. I hope you enjoyed this video that showed this very simple circuit that you can use to resonate an unknown inductor against a known capacitor value to determine the resonant frequency so that you can calculate the inductance value either with a calculator or something like this uh, very handy uh, slide calculator here that I showed in the video. Uh, especially handy is being able to 
find out the resonant frequency of parallel tuned circuits like IF transformers that you might salvage them out of a radio or you might be working on a radio trying to figure out uh, what frequency these uh, cans were designed for so that you can either do a proper repair or maybe uh, reuse these devices in one of your own designs. Thanks especially to uh, is Michael Covington, N4TMI, for publishing the article nearly 25 years ago that just kind of inspired today's video. Uh, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. You know, tell your friends, and comments are always welcome. Thanks again.